suppose, we have isolated genomic DNA from bacterial cells. We know that, this DNA contains thousands of genes, or DNA sequences, encoding various proteins in bacteria. Now we want to find out, the presence of a specific DNA sequence in the bacterial genome. In other words, we are searching for a gene, or DNA sequence of interest, whose nucleotide composition is already known to us. But, we want to find out whether this known sequence is present in bacteria or not. Let's say, the red region in this DNA is representing the target sequence. And, suppose the nucleotide sequence of this DNA portion is this, in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Now the problem which we have to solve here is, how to detect, and confirm the presence of this target sequence in the total bacterial DNA. The answer to this is, the technique known as, southern blotting. But before going into the details of this technique, it is important for us to understand three important concepts. These are, nucleic acid hybridization, probes, and blotting. Let's study them one by one. We have already studied denaturation and renaturation of DNA in one of the previous video lectures. There we saw that, at high temperatures, the complementary strands of DNA separate. And, thus single-stranded DNA molecules are generated. This process is known as, denaturation of DNA. Now if, such denatured DNA strands are incubated under appropriate conditions, they will renature or reanneal to form a double-stranded molecule. And the basis of this renaturation is the complementary base pairing, between the two single-stranded DNA molecules. When, two single-stranded nucleic acid molecules, of complementary base sequence, form a double-stranded hybrid, the process is known as, nucleic acid hybridization. Nucleic acid hybridization can take place between, single-stranded DNA molecules. Also, it can take place between, single-stranded RNA molecules. Or, between one single-stranded DNA, and one single-stranded RNA molecule. Keep in mind that, in nucleic acid hybridization, the participating population of nucleic acids should be single-stranded. The hybrid formed as a result of nucleic acid hybridization, can be unstable, or stable depending on, the extent to which complementary base pairing takes place between the two strands. As a result, the double-stranded nucleic acid molecule formed can be partially, or completely double-stranded. So, if there is a high degree of complementary base pairing between the two strands, the hybrid formed is stable. The most familiar application of nucleic acid hybridization you have come across on this channel is, the PCR technique. In PCR, hybridization between primers and, the template DNA provides the specificity to PCR amplification. Besides this, other important applications are, in situ hybridization and, DNA microarrays. In molecular biology, nucleic acid hybridization is mostly used for, the detection of a specific sequence in a mixture of DNA fragments or total cell DNA. But for this, we also need probes. So, what are probes actually? Let's find out. A probe can be defined as, a labeled molecule, that binds specifically to the molecule of interest. Here, the molecule of interest is a nucleic acid sequence that we want to detect. And, the molecule that will help us in the detection process is, the labeled molecule. Suppose, we want to detect the DNA sequence in our example. So, we will obtain a complementary DNA sequence to this target sequence. Let's say by chemical synthesis. We will label this complementary DNA strand. Now, 
the label can be a radioactive atom, a fluorescent tag, or an enzyme. So, this labeled DNA is the probe, in our example. When this probe is added to the sample containing the target sequence, it will bind to it because of the complementary base pairing. Once bound, we can detect the bound probe by the visualizing or detecting the label. For example, if probe is radio labeled, it is detected by auto radiography. If the probe is labeled with the fluorescent tag, it is detected by fluorescence. And if the probe is labeled with enzyme, then they are detected by color or light forming reactions catalyzed by the enzyme. I hope you have now got a clear idea about nucleic acid hybridization and probes. Here, we need to focus on two very important requirements of techniques involving nucleic acid hybridization. Nucleic acid hybridization requires the target nucleic acid and the nucleic acid of the probe to be single-stranded. In other words, the two populations of nucleic acid molecules should be single-stranded. Therefore, in such experiments, the double-stranded nucleic acids, such as DNA is first denatured, to make them single-stranded molecules. Our second requirement is, gel electrophoresis. In molecular techniques, a particular DNA or RNA sequence is detected on a gel, but again, the detection is not directly carried on the gel. The separated nucleic acid molecules on the gel, are first transferred to a suitable solid support such as, nylon membrane. This is done by a process known as, blotting. What is blotting and how it is done? We will find out the details in our next video lecture. Thank you for watching.